It's been about a month since I started using sections as my full-time dashboard, and I made a video on it about that time. It's time to go over what I've learned, some of your comments, and some of the changes that I made to make this truly a workable dashboard and a daily driver. Let's get started. So when it comes to dashboards, in my opinion, there are two different kinds of dashboards. There is an awareness dashboard that just basically displays things uh, as you need to know about them. And then there is an interaction dashboard that allows you to control a bunch of things. On my desk here, what I have is a tablet that combines both of those. But as I've used it over a period of time, I realized that I just need to know about things more than I need to interact with them. Voice control is getting better in Home Assistant. I have a little M5 stack echo on the desk here. I have some other smart speakers that I can inter interact with voice. If I need to control something, I can switch over real quick to a different screen and control that. So what I need is just really awareness. And this is a lot is based on your comments. So let's jump into what my current dashboard looks like, at least the earlier version of it. Now this is the area by area. Basically I've created everything in rooms or areas. So you have outside, uh, an area, this is not necessarily an area, but it's a function, so motion, security, and then the different rooms have different things in them. Now, some of you have talked about using room cards and drilling into that. I've never really done that because it takes a lot of time to build out that kind of thing. And maybe one day that would be something fun to do, but I just need something more simple, which is what Sections has done for me. Now, this is what it looks like with all of the entities that I wanna look at on one dashboard. And some of you have asked, did I get the calendar on there? Yes, here's the calendar on there. And I think on the last video, I probably showed some of that. I had a, um, a demo or a bonus video at the end where I had this entity section where I took all of these and broke them down by entity. Well, that meant I had hundreds of devices on my dashboard and I don't need all of that. And you all have commented on that as well. So what I've done is I've made a lot of changes to the dashboard and I've done something that looks more like this. All of this stuff here basically boils down to this, and these are only the things that are currently active. One of the things I did not know, or I did not realize, is that the visibility control wasn't just for the entire section, the visibility control was for each individual card, at least from, from a tile card perspective, in that section. So I used to have it set up where sections like this, where this humidity section was there, and that would be controllable visibility-wise by just the section. So the whole section would come and go. What I realized and what you all helped me with in the comments was that there is actually visibility setting on each individual tile card. And I've set that all up. Now you can see right now that only the things that are on or active are showing up in my dashboard here. Now the exception is humidity. I haven't gone through and done anything with that. The temperature outside is always on because that changes drastically enough that I don't really have limits that I can set it for. One of the cool things is I can see now at a glance all the temperatures in the house that are outside of a threshold. And in this case, the threshold is anything above 75 degrees shows up here. Anything below 70 shows up here. Uh, and so a couple of the rooms here are actually colder than they should be. And that's an HVAC system issue or whatever. You can see that I'm going from, and let me just show you here, this is, these are all the entities on that page. If I were to display all of this stuff together, it would take up all of this dashboard space. It would have to be scrollable. And then I wouldn't be able to see it at a glance on my dashboard screen. By looking at it this way, and by the way, just to let you know, when you go into edit mode on a dashboard, if you've got conditional cards or visibility settings, it will still display everything in edit mode. That's why you're able to see everything and edit and do stuff with it. If it didn't do that, once you went into visibility mode or set it for a visibility or conditional, it would just disappear forever until that condition was met. Um, in order to edit it, you have to be able to uh, see all of them once you go into edit mode. So here's all of the entities that are on here. One of the other things I've done too with this is I used to have inside lights as one uh, uh, section, fans is another section, uh, temperature was one section, air quality was another section, and all of this was split out. And you can see that, uh, well, you can't really see it anymore, I've already done it, but you would have each section for each one of these things. So now what I've been able to do is 
based on the number of items that I think are going to be on at any given time, I've combined my lights and my fans into a single section. Uh, and I've done that for a few other areas as too. Um, let's see, the temps are all combined into one area. All of the security and motion are combined into one area as well, because I don't need all of these things. They won't all be active at one time and it saves a lot of dashboard space. One of the other things I was able to do on here is to go into this particular screen, the configuration for the view and set this to number of columns three. If you set it to four, four, there you go and save it. You'll see that this automatically sp splits it out a little bit and then it looks a little, it leaves a lot of white space here and I don't need all that space. So what I can do is I can set that now into uh, just three. And then when I look at it, it's more spaced out or better spaced out placement is better and it just looks better overall. Now, a lot of you have said that you really like my old dashboard and you like looking at it at a glance. One of the things that I liked on the old dashboard was the different color cards and at a glance, you can see everything at once. This is a super busy dashboard. And although a lot of you like it, when I look at this, and I compare it to my other dashboard and I see just the things that I'm most interested in. I think this overall is going to be better. And this is what I've used for my daily driver for a little bit now. Now, do I like the old dashboard versus the new one? As I just mentioned, I like the new one a lot better. Uh, as I get busy and things are happening, I would rather just look at something that only uh, shows me conditions whenever a certain or shows me a card whenever a certain condition is met. I don't need to look at the whole dashboard all the time. Some things just don't change that often. For example, the temperatures in the house, I maybe want to know when they go outside of the range that I've set for them. And that gives me some uh, idea that maybe I need to take some action, but otherwise they just sit there and do their thing. And I don't need to look at them all the time. From a mental perspective, it helps me to not, my mind gets so cluttered when I'm looking at that dashboard and it's sitting right over here on the desk. So it's always in my view and I'm always seeing it. So I only need to see things that really matter. And that's where you get into the, uh, the conditional cards. Now, some of the other things you might notice here are these, uh, these blue uh, icons, uh, these change based on the color of the temperature or based on a condition as well. When I first set up this new dashboard, uh, I wanted to, to give me a colorful indication as well as a visual indication as to what's happening. When I had so many cards on here, I needed those things to be different colors just to give me an idea of what's happening. Uh, so this mimics some of what this was, where it would be green when it's in a good range, and then the colors would change based on temperature. For example, outside it would get red if it was over, I think, 95 degrees, uh, and all these different things would change based on uh, their actual status. So what I've done, I've changed it now in here to do the same thing. Now you'll notice since I stepped away a moment ago that the one of the rooms temperature went above the threshold and the card has already disappeared off of here, which is kind of interesting. But in order to do the dashboard coloring or the icon coloring, I'll take this card, for example, I'm going to show you the code editor here and I'll show you that what I've done is I've used card mod, which is a, a card you can install through HACS and you can change the color based or the style of the card based on uh, the temperature. So in this case, anything from zero to 70 is blue. That me where it is right now, 70 to 74 is normal. And then anything above 74 turns orange. So I get a visual indication that it's above that. Now, is this necessary anymore? Uh, not, not anymore that now that I have this visibility set up in here, uh, because it will actually disappear entirely off the card. If it's outside of a range, um, I did the, the color thing first, and then I did the visibility thing second. So this is a lot better for me. Uh, let me show you how I did the visibility. I'll just pick one of these humidity ones, for example. So if I want the humidity to be in a certain range and only show up at a certain time, uh, first thing I'll do is get the, the entity sensor here or entity name, and then I'll go to visibility. I'll add a condition. Now, one of the things I've also done is I, I set a range for the temperatures, the below and above temperatures, and that requires adding an or condition. I'll just go through that real quick because humidity could be high or low. So I'm going to do a condition. First of all, if the numeric state of this entity, which is the humidity level, 
if it's above, let's say 55%, I want it to show up on my card. And then I will add a new condition with another numeric state. And if it is below, let's say 30, which would be weird in the house, uh, then it would show up on the card as well. So I have two different ranges here and then I save it. And that card now has disappeared off of here or will, uh, which one I just do, we'll see here. Uh, let me say done. I forgot which one I just edited. Anyway, it disappears. You'll see one of the cards is gone, right? So that just means that um, the humidity is not in a range that I really need to worry about. And if it goes above or below that range, that card will pop back up on here. That's the same way with any card on here. If I, if I look at one of the ones where uh, the lights set up right now, the visibility is set up, the entry hall state is equal to on, then the card will show up. Otherwise the card stays off and then it doesn't show up on my list. So none of my lights are on right now. And so because of that, they don't show up on here and it makes the dashboard much more compact and much easier to read all the time. Uh, I have, I used to have a whole group where I would do visibility on the group. So let's just take, um, let's just take this one right here, a random group. You can do the same visibility setting here. You can have uh, conditions here for multiple items or a single item. And I used to have the weather alerts. Uh, they're up here now. If this weather alert was above zero or this weather alert is not equal to unknown, it sits in an unknown state when there's no alerts because it's parsing the alert file. Uh, but anyway, if, if it goes above uh, or changes state or this one goes above zero, then I have alerts show up. I used to have an entire section for that that would come and go. And when it does that, when the section comes and goes, it moves everything around. So that section might be right here and it would push all this stuff to the right. And then this one, because it's three columns, would come over here to the bottom. Now, because of the single visibility card setting instead of the section visibility, the card will only show up whenever there is an alert that shows up for that particular uh, weather service thing. The, the thing about this is a lot of people like to customize things and I do too. I want it to be a specific way and I was concerned how I was going to get all those colors and things into this new sections. By having the visibility setting, which is done through the UI, which is super nice, and having the ability to only show things that matter it compresses that dashboard down uh, and it makes it um, work real well for what I want to do. And I really like this new sections. It's clean. It resizes with your different um, devices. And I think I showed this to you all before. There is a, a little plugin I use. And you asked me what it was it's called mobile something. Mobile first, I think it's called. And then you can come up here and you can select different um, devices on here. And these different devices will show you what it looks like for that particular device. I think there's some stuff built into Google that does that developer tools. There's some other things that you can do as well that also allow you to do the same thing. That's what some of the comments were saying. Uh, if I want to look at it on the phone, I basically just go through here and this is what it looks like on the phone. And this is interaction. You can interact with this, right? So you can actually click on things if you wanted to. So there it is um, on the mobile as well. This is very much a personal preference, and it's also very much how much time you want to put into building something. Using the new sections and adding cards, as I showed in, showed in my other video, is very simple. It's just all through the UI, boom, 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 you've got your cards up there. Some of the other dashboards require a lot of back-end customization and things like that. Now, for the colors, yes. Do I need the colors now? Probably not because of the visibility and conditional settings. You can also see here that I no longer need to scroll. Um, some of y'all mentioned that Okay, well, you've got to scroll through here and do all these things to see it. Yes, if you want to see all this down here, if you do something like this, everything is on the dashboard as it sits right now. I don't have to do any scrolling at all. And then one other thing I did too was in a section down here at the bottom, this doesn't show up unless one of these things is true. And this is all of my updates. And if this were, uh, if there was an update required, you'll notice it says unnamed. I didn't give it a title. So what that means is down here hidden and you can't even scroll down because there's nothing down there. If there's an update that shows up and it does fit on my dashboard better, I have it kind of expanded out here. That's kind of what it looks like on the dashboard. This little section will pop up with any updates that are available for HAC or hacks, I'm sorry, hacks or for home assistant itself. And then I'll be able to go action those. That's kind of a neat thing you can put down here. You can put sections down here at the bottom with no titles. 
they're basically hidden unless something actually pops up there like the updates or something else you might want to put down here that only shows up every once in a while doesn't need a title doesn't need doesn't take up any space at all unless there is an actual conditional thing met in there um, I hope that answers some of the questions that you all had asked in chat on the comments on the old video, which is linked down below, by the way. Watch that video. It talks about the initial setup of this uh, of the sections and what sections are and a little bit about Project Grace, which is what uh, Home Assistant is doing in order to make these dashboards better and easier for people to set up. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. Thank you for those who are channel members or support me in other ways, such as Patreon or Ko-fi. And those that uh, subscribe, thank you for that. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button, hit the bell icon so you're notified, and we will see you on the next one.